Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. Today we're looking at an awesome application called Gotify and this can act as our central notification server that we can plug in pretty much anything. It could be our clone backups, it could be scripts that you're running on your server, it could be crowdsec alerts, it could even be things like uptime Kuma availability statistics or changes. And that's just scratching the surface. Gotify is completely flexible and extensible. And as long as it can receive a text message, you're pretty much good to go. And on top of that, Gotify not only has a great and responsive user interface, it also has a mobile application so you can receive notifications on the go. So I'll start by providing a review of the features. We'll then go over the configuration and then we'll end up deploying this in Docker. Now, don't worry, you can deploy this on pretty much any infrastructure you want to, but the Docker one is pretty simple. So that's what we'll be doing today. Once we have it deployed, I'll show you a few configuration steps so that you can get some common services integrated into Gotify. These will be things like Uptime Kuma and CrowdSec. And I'll also show you how to do a script. So it could be something like a simple copy job from one place to another, and you want to know when that's completed. So heading over to the Gotify website, we can see some of the standout features. It's self-hosted, it's free and open source, and things like cross-platform and auto-updated Docker containers are a real win. We can also see a screenshot of the mobile application that's available on Android. Unfortunately, this isn't available on iOS. So hopping quickly into the architecture, we can see that Gotify provides both a REST API and a WebSocket. And it sits between your applications, so the things that you want to send notifications, and your client, i.e. what's going to receive the notifications. And it will both push and pull messages as specified. Now the great thing here is that we can actually set up notifications based upon per application. And I'll show you that later on. Now I recommend installing this using Docker because it's really straightforward, it's clearly defined and repeatable, and we've seen on the previous page that the images are constantly updated. One advantage of the Docker installation is that you can configure Gotify using environment variables instead of a separate configuration file, which will be required if you're going to use a binary. So if we head over to my GitHub, you'll be pleased to know this is really straightforward to set up, and I'll have you up and running in a couple of minutes. The first thing we need to do really is to specify the volume where it's going to store some of our persistent data for Gotify, chiefly the configuration files. Next, you want to specify your time zone just to make sure that the log values sync up. And here I'm going to be routing this through my traffic proxy so I can get a proper SSL certificate, a nice green tick in my browser, and everything's going to be secured. If you don't want to use a proxy, simply remove the label section and the proxy section and just add the ports. By default, this runs on port 80. So heading over to my Docker VM, I've copied the config and tweaked it. You'll need to tailor this to your domain if you're using a proxy and also change the ports to something that isn't going to conflict. But it should be pretty straightforward. So let's jump into deployment. So I've navigated to where my docker compose file is stored and I'm simply going to run sudo docker compose up dash d. Because the image isn't found it's going to go away and pull that and hopefully there aren't any errors and we should be up and running relatively soon. Once this is completed I'm going to jump into Portainer and just check the logs but you could also do that by running sudo docker logs and then the name of the container. So this looks like it's completed without any errors. So let's jump into Portainer. So inside Portainer, we can see that the container is healthy. Let's jump into the logs and just double check that. And that all looks good. There's no error messages and it says that it's listening on port 80. So let's go and check that. Do note that if you're running this through traffic and you set a subdomain for this, i.e. gotify.yourdomain.com, you will need to add that to your DNS resolver. In my case, I've added this to my PyHall installation. Okay, so hopping over to my browser, I've gone to gotify.jimsgarage.co.uk and I've been presented with the default login screen. Now, because we didn't specify a default password in the configuration files, you can do that if you want. We need to log in with the default username and password. And that quite simply is admin, admin. So when we log in, it pops up in the bottom left corner and gives you the client name for what logged in. And you can keep tabs of this, which is really handy for security. You can keep control of exactly who has access to it at any time and revoke that if you want to. So if you look along the top, there's a few options within Gotify. We have users, apps, clients, plugins, admin, and logout. 
So users are pretty much what it says on the tin. They are the people that you want to have access to this server. So for example, the admin that we just created is a user. You might want to create different users for different people that you want to give access to. You simply click users and then create a new user and you can decide whether they have administrative privileges or not. Apps is another important feature and I mentioned that earlier in the video. So if you click on apps, we can create an application. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, as I said before, and if we go back to the diagram that was shown, each application that we want to receive notifications for will need to be configured in here. So for example, we would create an application for CrowdSec and we would use that application to send notifications from CrowdSec. Similarly, we could set it up for our clone or uptime Kuma or whatever it is that you want to get notifications for. Simply click create application. We'll do one for CrowdSec here. So go ahead and give it a name, a short description if you want, and then you can tweak what priority you want to give it. Now, these are Android notification priorities, so 10 would be the highest and zero would be lowest. And that will determine how it shows up on your notification draw. So given that this is CrowdSec, I'm gonna give it a 10 just to give it the highest importance. I want to know when an event's triggered on CrowdSec. So now that CrowdSec is created, you'll see that it also made a token. Now we'll need this token when we're creating push messages. So what does that mean? Well, it's basically a way for CrowdSec to be authenticated. This means that only applications that are authenticated, i.e. these are applications you want to monitor and you've basically given it a password so it can talk to your server. Otherwise, anything could talk to it. Something malicious could start bombarding your Gotify server and we don't want that. So we take this token and we add it into the push message that we're gonna configure CrowdSec to use. And we'll get onto that later in the video. As I mentioned in the last video, Gotify works really well with Uptime Kuma. And so we're gonna create a new application for Uptime Kuma. And similarly, it's gonna generate a token and we're gonna put that token into Uptime Kuma so that we can send notifications to our Gotify server. And believe it or not, just like clockwork, as I've been recording this video, I've had a number of notifications on my Android app that you can see here. So it said that the Arc server that I set up in the last video is down. So creating a new application for Uptime Kuma, I'm just gonna give this one a default priority of five. Maybe it's less important, whichever service it is that you're monitoring. We're just gonna hit create again. And again, it's created another token and we'll need to copy this token for when we configure it within Uptime Kuma. Lastly, I'm gonna show you how to do a basic script so that any of the scripts that you're running on your servers, these could be batches, these could be shells, whatever it is, cron jobs, etc., you can basically create the same process. So create an application. I'm just gonna call this one R clone because I'm gonna append the command at the bottom of my R clone script so that when a backup completes, it sends me a handy notification telling me the status of that backup. Things like, did it fail? Did it pass? How much data, etc. As I said, this is completely extensible so you can put as much information into your notification as you want. I'm gonna give this a lower priority but feel free to tweak this as you need to. And there we go, we have three applications set up now with their API tokens, and we can then go and specify these tokens in the configuration of those notifications. Quickly jumping into the Clients tab, you can see that the client is showing up this browser that I'm logged in. When you log in from a mobile device, it'll also add a client here, and any other web browser that you log in with, it will show up on here. Another cool feature of Gotify is that it supports plugins. Now these are basically same as any other plugin. These are additional things that you can add into Gotify to give it additional functionality. If we hop over to the GitHub contributions page, we can see that there's a few plugins there and you may wish to add those if you want to. And just having a quick look through there, we can see that there's an MQTT plugin, there are email plugins and Slack. So those could be useful for you. And there's a whole load of documentation on the official Gotify website if you want to have a go at writing your own plugin. So now that we have the basics implemented, we've set up a user, we've created some applications and we've been given credentials for those. You can see on the left here that we now have our different applications. And once we receive a notification, those would show up in these areas. We don't have any because we haven't configured anything now to use them. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Let's start with CrowdSec. So heading over to the CrowdSec documentation, it's really great that Gotify is officially supported. And there's one prerequisite we need to do first. So you can see it here. We need to enable the HTTP plugin within CrowdSec. So if you click on that, it's really straightforward. We simply need to go into the profiles.yaml and uncomment the HTTP default. We then need to create a HTTP YAML if that doesn't already exist at this location specified on the screen. Once you've done that, head back to the previous instructions and we need to copy and paste the following code into that YAML file. Now, what's this going to do? Well, it says it's of type HTTP, which is what we just set up. We've given it the name HTTP default, which is what we specified in the previous screen. We're telling it that we want the log level of info. And the important bit now is down in the format section. So in the format section, this is basically the body of the notification. And we don't need to make any changes here. I'll show you an example of what it will look like when we receive a message when I log into my live Gotify instance. So basically what it's going to do here is it will show you the IP address of the offender. It will show you what type of attack that they tried to mount. It will provide you with a link to CrowdSec Central Intelligence and it will also give you a handy link to Shodan for the IP. If you don't know what Shodan is, go and check it out. I'll put a link in the description. The only parts here that we do need to change are the URL. So you'll need to change this to the URL that you specified in your traffic deployment. And the important bit, where we created the keys using the client, you'll need to paste that code into here. Once you've done that, you'll need to save and then redeploy CrowdSec. And if all goes to well, you should be up and running. Now I've hopped into my live Gotify just to give you a demonstration of what this will look like. So here you can see that one hour ago, I have a ban in place for the following IP address in place for four hours, which is the default. And you can go and check out my CrowdSec video if you don't know what some of this stuff means. And there's the links that I mentioned. So if I click this, it's going to show me all the information that CrowdSec has for the IP address. Typically, it's an IP address that's been doing something bad. It's been doing lots of port scans. It's been trying to mount lots of attacks, etc. Um, but you can find all of the information that CrowdSec has on it here. You can also see on my live that I've got Uptime Kuma running here. So in my previous video where we set up a notification for a Steam game server, you can see that it's just notified me that 17 minutes ago, the Arc server that I was looking at went down. So let's head over into Uptime Kuma now and set up notifications for all of your services. So back into my production Uptime Kuma, I'm gonna click on the top right. I'm gonna click settings. I'm gonna to go to notifications and I'm gonna set up a new notification. So I click here, click on Gotify. I'm gonna put in the application token now that's the token that we created within Gotify when we created a new application. Simply paste that in, add your server URL and specify a priority and then just click test or save. It really is that simple. If everything goes to plan, you should receive a notification within your web browser. And if you haven't already, now might be a good time to go and download the Android application and test that you're receiving notifications on your mobile device. Now, if you're a bit hesitant about setting this up and opening ports to the internet, remember, you could use a WireGuard server to open this up via a VPN. This will give you comfort that your Gotify server is protected behind a VPN that only you have access to. This will give you flexibility to receive notifications on the go and also give you peace of mind that nobody else is going to be able to receive them. And as I mentioned, we can also integrate Gotify notifications into scripts. Now, if anyone's been following my videos, cast your mind back to my use of Rclone. I use this for moving files from my NAS into my Google Drive storage. Now, what would be useful there is for me to know when that's completed. And I can do that with this handy notification here. So I have a PowerShell script here, which has the source of the files that I want and the destination. So in this case, it's just moving files from one location on my NAS to another. So this is simply using Robocopy to move files from one folder to another. There's nothing complicated about that. But the bit that we're interested in here 
is where the dollar sign starts. So I've given it a title of our clone completed. The message is just that the files are transferred. It's got a priority of seven. And then here I've specified the client token, which we get from the Gotify UI. And then when this completes, it's going to send me a notification to say that it finished successfully. Now, I could tweak that and I could put in a whole host more data, things like how many files, how quickly it did it, um, whether there any errors, etc. But I'm just keeping this simple and giving you an idea of what you can achieve with Gotify. So hopefully by now you've got Gotify up and running, it's secured behind your proxy and you're able to start receiving notifications to both your web browser and your mobile device so that you can receive notifications for all of the services that you care about all of the scripts that you're running in the background. I've been using Gotify for ages and it's really helped me to maintain and manage my home lab. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Tell me about some of the things that you're monitoring in your home lab. If you've liked this video, please remember to subscribe and comment and I'll see you in the next one. Take care everybody.